the Vancouver Canucks are in a difficult cap situation. They've had to make some tough decisions regarding players that were deemed to be vital to their future. And budgeting for years of a stagnant salary cap has led to some serious pain. Too many stagnant contracts holding them back from optimal financial performance. You know what the Canucks could have used? Rocket Money, the sponsor of this video. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that can help you manage your finances with the greatest of ease. For me personally, it's in the budgeting. Money management is critical to me, and making sure I'm not leaking excess funds that could be used for long-term savings or bill payments is what Rocket Money does best. The app constantly gives me alerts for unspecified and unusual transactions that come from my account. It helps me to set budgets for short and long-term spending. I can even monitor my credit with ease. Rocket Money is a very useful tool to have in your financial arsenal, and 3.4 million people believe the same thing. If you're interested, go to rocketmoney.com slash tree to get started for free or unlock even more features with premium. Remember, Rocket Money is the place to go to get it. To be honest, Vancouver could really use it with their situation. For a lot of Canucks fans, the dream was simple. Jim Benning had been holding the team back since his hiring. The day where he was sent packing is a day that will be cherished for eternity. A chance to move forward with life in Vancouver's prosperity as a franchise again. Under new hands, you argue, they have a chance to have something intriguing with their core pieces. But unfortunately, it rarely works out that way. Every action has an equal but opposite reaction. Freeing yourself of a demon may force an even worse one to consume you. You got your wish. Now gaze upon the current day. Welcome to hell. It's a place where every single hope the Canucks had barely a year ago had vanished faster than the team's trust in Brock Besser. A cold abyss where all loyalty and dedication are stabbed in the back by political bickering. Where petty squabbles are exacerbated into world-shattering affairs. Vancouver truly represents their city well. The area of East Hastings, that is. So how did this come to be? How did the joy of firing Jim Benning suddenly turn every day into day one of free agency under his reign? Well, the issue started ironically with Benning. This problem was one that a lot of people with poor impulse control have. When the shiny object would be in the window display, he'd do anything to get it. You could have thrown shit in a pile if it was a bottom six or a third pairing D-man with grit, Benning would sign it for four years at a $4 million AAV. His carefully sculpted defense was a masterpiece rivaling a two-year-old imitating Jackson Pollock. When acquiring the awful contract of Oliver Ekman, Larson isn't the worst move in the grand scheme of things, there are serious problems. No, they have to throw money at Tyler Myers and Tucker goddamn Pullman. Because nothing screams logic like looking at the Jets defensive shit heap of 2021 and telling yourself you need the guy that had one goddamn point in 40 games. Ten million dollars for four years. He's currently on LTIR. That whole defense eats cap like no one's business for next to no return. The ultimate in bureaucratic inefficiency. After years of this shit and still getting nowhere after a terrible start in 2021, Benning and Travis Green were assigned to scout an up-and-coming league known as the Unemployment Line. Vancouver needs a man who's built champions instead of assisted them. Jim Rutherford may be well advanced in his years, but the man assembled cup winners in multiple locations. With his protege Patrick Alvine, they will fix the problem. Ignore that JR's fallen apart after the opening salvo in both Carolina and Pittsburgh and his drafting record with the Pens is less than optimal given their circumstances. They will offer the Canucks words. And that's about it. Here's my problem with the new regime. You wax cynical poetic about how Vancouver's late season run last year was unsustainable in a vacuum. It makes sense when you look deeper into it. The Canucks are a systemically flawed team. They lack defensive structure. Their prospect pool is run dry. They're locked into a plethora of awful deals. Any success is merely due to Thatcher Demko standing on his head. All fair points, but they become moot with this dilemma. If this team is in such desperate need of an overhaul, then why the fuck did you extend the core pieces you were supposedly trying so hard to trade away? All I was hearing for about a year was how Brock Besser, JT Miller, and Connor Garland were ready to pack their suitcases for new destinations only to pull a 180 and keep them around. Besser and Miller were extended in the offseason because you were gunning for a push? JT got a seven-year deal that starts next season. The only move I can really give Alvin and JR praise for is signing Andre Kuzmenko whom roughly 31 other teams had identified as an impact player. Those moves don't indicate a flawed roster. That shows that you think they're the horses to ride into battle with. These horses were immediately shot out of cannons. Not shot with cannons, literally shot out of them. It's the only way to explain how ass-backwards this season has been for the Canucks. You can argue that Thatcher Demko will carry them to relevance like he has in the past. 
But in glorious Vancouver tradition, they have quite literally broken him. Physically injured and mentally destroyed. In the ashes of what was once an elite goaltender, the Canucks are now blessed with deadly saboteurs such as Colin Delia and Spencer Martin. Never forget what is supposed to be a defense in front of them on a given night. It's the perfect concoction for consistent hilarity. One of the worst penalty killing units in recent memory. It wouldn't pass a college course for how bad it's been. The goaltending has somehow gotten even worse since Demko's been out. Vancouver blew it like most multi-goal leads they've come across. Early in the season, oh, it was an art form. They broke the league record through 40 games. They nearly eclipsed their single year record by the end of November. As completely apathetic towards their own zone like GT Miller has been towards his own production. Even worse, he's become petulant, visibly yelling at officials and his own teammates in conduct most fitting of a team leader. That's right, they made him an alternate captain. You could say Tanner Pearson should be one, but... Well, let me give you a hand as to why he isn't. He needs one. He's had a supposed easy surgery get done multiple times due to hideous botching. His career might be over. The NHLPA is investigating how shit the treatment was. It's symbolic of the Canucks' season. Disaster at every turn. It's no surprise that someone should take blame for this failure. It can't be due to an amalgamation of factors, years upon years of personnel fuck-ups, and a flawed roster design. People want blood for this insult. The team can throw Brock Besser back into the doghouse, but he's not the true target of their ire. No, my friends, the real boogeyman for the Canucks happens to be a master of barbecue. Bruce Boudreaux is far from the biggest problem in Vancouver, but NHL coaches exist for two reasons. To be fired and to be fired again. If it were just a normal, here's your pink slip, clean out your office ordeal, it'd be understandable. However, what the Canucks did was take any sort of goodwill and hack it into origami. The paper crane made out of it will look nice in their collection. To properly predict what happened here, I haven't seen a coach get fucked over this badly since Roger Nielsen with the Leafs. In the worst kept secret known to man, Boudreaux was going to be fired for Rick Tockett. Not only did management accidentally spill their plans to the press, not only did they do nothing after the fact and pretend everything was fine, this charade dragged out for weeks, if not months. Bruce was having to answer questions about his future employment with fucking tears in his eyes. Vancouver, in a brilliant stroke of tone deafness, used his emotion for clout on social media. I've been very critical of Boudreaux in the past, and it was obvious Canucks Brass wanted to go in a different direction, but to desecrate his reputation on a public stage? Boudreaux did not deserve this? If you're gonna raw dog him like that, at least give him the comfort of letting him know beforehand. The situation only destroys. Nobody benefits from having Bruce Linger as a lackey. Just let him go. Pay him a severance and send him on his way back to TV. It's a bad sign when we see him being let go as a relief. Boudreaux was finally given a mercy kill for Rick Tockett. Was it worth it, Vancouver? He was so ready for the role he was at a loss for words after the second game. A band-aid on a sinking ship. As it dips into the cold ocean below, perhaps it can take Francesco Aquilini with them. My initial senses into his character were right. He only cares for himself and his reputation. Anything else is thrown to the wayside. It makes perfect sense as to how Vancouver's run as a franchise. Something tells me those allegations of abuse by his ex-wife and kids aren't a one-off. With how he's run people out of town for the smallest infractions, this tree's infection spreads to the root. Look at how toxic things have been in the executive branch since asserting power. He may not have been fit for the role, but Trevor Linden leaving out of the blue should have been a red flag. Aquilini posting that long scribe reeks of someone trying to get ahead of a shitstorm. I'm more surprised he didn't manage to do it for Bo Horvat. Remember when JR and Alvin extended Besser and Miller before the season? They don't have the cap space to pay their captain accordingly. Worse for them, Bo's having a career year, full of completely unsustainable goal production and the payment that it's going to require. All it's good for is upping his trade value. Bye-bye, Captain. You're gonna be moving to a different coastline. He'll be getting paid there, don't you worry. So how do you explain to the fans that you chose the petulant GT Miller over the goddamn captain? By trading Brock Besser for some string cheese? I can see it happen. So here's where shit's going to hit the fan for Vancouver. When you realize that things are more dire than they seem on the surface. What upside did the Canucks have at this point? Maybe a wild card if Thatcher Demko regains form and every single thing goes right? There isn't much coming from the farm system anymore. They're locked into some really, really awful contracts of their own doing. What happens with Gwyn Hughes? At what point does he have enough and one out? His brothers are having a good time in New Jersey. He might want to join in there. Worse, what about Elias Patterson? 
He wants to win. And his contract's up next season. What's to stop him from pulling a Matthew Goodchuck and demand out? You may think it's unrealistic and not in his character, but you only have so many years of prime play. No one can say with a straight face that the Canucks are anywhere close to a cop. He already looks checked out. Why would he be willing to sit through more of this? Who else is going to want to be set free? Firing Boudreau like that caused a lot of damage in that locker room. Trust is destroyed. It's really hard to get that back after being betrayed. The worst part about Vancouver is that they've done this all to themselves. It's something everyone saw coming from a mile away from every Benning free agency fuck up to Jim Rutherford's two-faced approach. Yet no matter what anyone said, they continue to drive this doomed bus off the damn cliff. Repeatedly. Without understanding why the bus keeps going off the cliff. This may be a darker year for Canucks fans than 97. Do you know how bad you have to be to have people even consider such a thought? They fill themselves into a corner with no real solution on what the hell to do. Rutherford's been on record saying that this team needs major surgery to fix the horror scene on the ice every game. But most of the old contracts that are hampering them can be moved without retention, if at all. It's the old adage. Be careful what you wish for. You're free of the old tyrant that held you back, but an even worse one may have taken his place. Trader Jim strikes again. I've tried to be honest. I've tried to answer the best I can. And sometimes that affects certain people. And in this case, it probably did affect him. And, uh, and I'm sorry I did that. And I've learned from it. So I've decided that I need to zip it. Unfortunately, it's uh, turned out the way it did. Nobody takes great pride in this. I've known Bruce for a long time. He's been a friend, and I feel very bad about it.